Welcome back to another episode of Dalsect in a Week. Apologies for it being a little bit late, and this week being a little bit shorter, although some of you might find that better. I'm not sure. The reason being, we travelled back to the UK with a, a slightly unwell Julia. She's she's on the mend, but she's got her first like chest cold, and there's some teeth coming through, and, and it's all just it's quite overwhelming as a as first-time parents, but been enjoying some home time. The 25-mile TT that I was supposed to do on Sunday morning, unfortunately, after getting up at half five and getting really excited to race, that was cancelled, understandably because of flooding on the roads. I went training, and then on the Monday, I went to the my local Molden Club 10 course, which is a more accurate gauge of how fast the TT bike is, and did two 10-mile TTs there, racing against myself and clocked two 18 minutes which i was very happy about the 18 19 minute barrier is something i've been fighting to get for a long time and now it seems i can fairly regularly get under there with optimal equipment which is good news for the hanzo time trail bike and the power numbers were pretty good as well so i was happy with that in the pro world news there's not a huge amount to talk about in terms of like a topic to discuss so I'll get straight into the heroes of the week and there's only four probably five the first one is Annemiek van Vluten she won the ladies tour of Norway it's, she showed that whereas a few years ago she just came and stormed and won everything that she entered this time round we've not seen her for a long time and she rocked up got second in the Olympic road race first in the Olympic time trial and then just gone straight to Norway and won that as well. And she's gone straight back up to altitude since then. So clearly, Anamika is not done with this year. And I'm guessing that leans towards the World Championships. The second winner, also in Norway, is Ethan Hayter, who's gone to, confusingly, straight after the Arctic Tour of Norway finishes, the Tour of Norway starts. Ethan showed a dominant first two stage wins and then held on to it. But he's still a Neo Pro, coming straight off the back of the Olympics, which... We're not, I think I said it in a tweet, we're not talking about Ethan Hayter as much as we should be. Because I really think he's the next sort of massive thing in, in pro cycling. And I saw, I raced Ethan again as a junior in track league. My max heart rate was set during a November track league in London on Ethan Hayter's wheel. It's 197 beats a minute. Admittedly, he was on full race gear and I was on a very small gear and some metal wheels just to make sure that life was quite difficult for me but by god was life quite difficult for me on his wheel back then so he's got significantly better and clearly he's uh well he's just won gc at the tour of norway after a stunning olympics a stunning tour of algarve and just a stunning neo pro year at team ineos so hats off to him the third candidate is michael storer who's not really won races. He's won the odd thing here and there, I think, and now he's just gone and knocked in two stages of the Vuelta, like in the same Vuelta, and that's massive. So, like, well done to him. And, yeah, again, another rider we don't actually talk about a huge amount because there's, I think there's quite a lot of, like, Michael Storer types, like these, these guys that can climb, but not quite at, like, Roglic level, but then, you know, he's knocked in two Grand Tour stage wins. So like, that's massive. Now let's talk about the individual pursuit. Because quite a lot happened in the individual pursuit this week. And we're going to talk about people going under four minutes for the individual pursuit. Now you're th you think I'm about to talk about one guy who went under four minutes. But I'm not. Actually, I'm first. I'm going to talk about... And I've had to like get the name up. So the Dutch pairing of Tristan... Tristan Bangma and Patrick Boss clocked a low 359 for 4,000 meters on a tandem. Now I know you're going to say it's on a tandem, so it's like it's you know it's, it's pretty much twice the amount of horsepower. But I don't think it quite works like that. And you still have to go that fast on a 250 meter track. So that's massive. Like that's massive. And they came away with the gold medal from the Brits by by quite a margin and a world record as well. So that was big, and their pacing was sublime. Like, if you want to see it, Joe Roussel has an Insta story up for a very short time only on their, the breakdown of their pacing, and it is perfection to look at if you're into that kind of thing. Well, the other one's Ashton Lambie. I mean, he did a 359.9 for like, the individual pursuit, and I think a lot of us were watching there, me included, 
on the day, on the live stream with a I have my phone calculator up, phone lap timer up, getting the lap splits, knowing that he was doing 14 fours, which uh, which I wasn't sure was good enough because I hadn't factored in the start. He's broken the world IP record with the 359, something for a long time we never thought was possible. Like records are not meant to drop off a cliff like they have done in recent years. They're meant to be a, like a slow burner. It's meant to be an exponential curve, but it really just isn't going that way. And a lot of that is down to technology. And perhaps these endurance events becoming more sprint events, like they're much more anaerobic. Now, now the team pursuit is closer to three and a half minutes than it is to four. So is that now becoming a sprint event? And my other question for Ashton Lambie would be, would it be easier to do a sub five minute 5K than a sub four minute 4K because you could relax the lap times a little bit to compensate for the standing start? Or would a 3K be easier? Like, I don't know. It's just th food for thought there. WTF of the week, I, I don't have one. I don't have one. I really don't have one. It's actually my WTF of the week is leaning towards track riders doing very well post Olympics on the road. We've had Matt Walls win a stage in Norway, Ethan Hayter win two stages in Norway and GC, Filippo Ganna ripping it up a climb in Norway, uh, Elia Viviani and Kuntoni ran 1 2 in the first stage of Poitou Chiron. And well, that's all I've got, but like normally you'd say if they've been training for short, punchy endurance events it's going to take a while to get going on the road but actually they've come straight into the road and just ripped it to pieces so are we training all wrong like completely wrong should we all be on the track that's my wtf of the week upcoming tour of deutschland is about to start i'm doing that i'm racing that i am through he's here it's gripal's like last home race so we're gonna we're gonna do our best for him simac tour lady simac tours ongoing at the moment which is which is big and the and Bink Bank, Plue, Bink Bank is round, Plue is round the corner, Bink Bank is round the corner, and we are not a million miles out from Tour of Britain, which is arguably the biggest race of the year. And I said arguably because there are on paper bigger races, but you know, it's a big deal. So thanks for watching and see you next week.